Log Talk Radio. What in the fuck was that? God what? damn it. Tristan, what? your phone buzzed, and I got confused. I thought it was the sonic screwdriver. I thought it was the robot uprising. I'm it scared. Is. I'm fighting well, them as I've... we speak. It's okay. I can still do the cast. All right. I've had a good run. Hello. I'm Matt Marrero. You're about right, to not next... yeah, right not next. Yeah, right not next to me is Tristan Walter. We are doing our Doctor Who Wednesday right before Thanksgiving. Was this the original plan? No. Did this happen? Yes. Is that our motto <laughs> on our graves? So, uh, <laughs> just written. Just all the tombstones. This was not the original plan. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually but yes. have to take that, though. All right, that's fair. That's understandable. I see why you would. Anyway, so, yes, we are doing another Doctor Who Wednesday. We were supposed to do five and six together. Uh, if you guys have seen our Keikaku Corner podcast that we have, we have clips of those video clips up on our Those Guys on the Radio YouTube channel. You saw that uh, Trish and I were talking about basically what happened throughout the past week. Because uh, you and I were supposed to do, la- well, last week, technically, because we recorded them late last week. Um, and so, yeah, we were supposed to actually do Doctor Who Wednesday last week, two episodes, five and six. You were sick. I wasn't feeling well. Your computer was, like, not understanding what's going on. So it exploded. So we were all just under the weather. I think Toto might have also been, potentially. Unsure. Point is, is that all of us were like, God damn this. So I don't know if you saw Doctor Who last week, but I know that we couldn't podcast on it last week. Yeah. So, but thankfully, it all works out because next week we'll be doing, well, two weeks from now, we'll be doing eight and nine. And then the penultimate, you know, the, the finale, episode 10, since it's only 10, not 12 this, this series, we'll just do 10 on its own. So it's okay, everybody. Uh, but either way, though, because I didn't want to do three and one because I didn't know how long it would take for us to talk about three. But again, things happen, and that's okay. Sometimes you can't control the flow of time, you just have to hold on and let it just kind of take its course, which is clearly the theme for Doctor Who. That's what she does every week. <clears throat> Doctor right. just looks at what's going on, says, well, we got to. We got to let it just happen. What Aww. are we going to do? And they're all like, you're right, Doctor. And then they sit down and shit happens. They just don't do anything. Well, that's a... All right. I mean... I guess technically you're not wrong. That's a fucking joke. They destroy the universe and reset everything on a <laughs> weekly basis. <laughs> Tristan, that's humor. Are you doing okay, oh, no. buddy? It's the it's the I day am, before Thanksgiving. I am fine, Matt. <laughs> Are you thankful for booze? Is that what's going on here? It is not the robot uprising. I don't right, know of course not. About. Exactly. Um, so... Out of these three episodes... Uh-huh. That was funny, uh-huh. Matt. Please, <clears throat> please, please, uh, please continue. You know, you want to know how I know that that's a robot and not Tristan? He would never say I was funny. Uh, that's how I know. Damn it. <laughs> if, if Tristan isn't calling me an asshole, that's not Tristan, damn it. So, I... You have what? Yeah, I mean, I've known you for ten years. So... When it comes to these three episodes of Doctor Who, I enjoyed them a lot. Uh, there were parts of them I didn't enjoy, and I'll fully admit, you know, we'll talk about them. That's kind of what we do here. But I don't, I don't know, because there are some people out there, and we were talking about this on Keikaku Corner. I don't think we went too in-depth with it, but I want to talk about it here as well. A lot of people saying, like, oh, Doctor Who has done, gone down in quality. And I'm like, I don't know if these people have been, we feel like we've been maybe watching different Doctor Whos for a bit. Yeah. 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 Now, you can tell me I feel like the villains should be more powerful, perhaps, but I think that I wanted to kind of get back, me personally, I wanted to get back to a Doctor Who where the villain didn't fucking push a button to destroy the Earth every two episodes. Right. No, because it kind of felt like that with Moffat, where it was like, look, Moffat, I want a season finale type villain at the season finale. 
I don't need yeah. a season finale type villain in the middle, unless of course it's a you know like a break for like a half a year break. That's different. But if it's on a half a year break and it's just going straight, I don't need one in the middle of the season. I don't need one at the beginning of the season necessarily. Although yes, if that's a new Doctor, of course I understand why shit's gonna get real real quick. Um, right. But still, I'm o- I'm okay with the villain being able to just say, hey, look, I'm really after one person. You know, like, I'm, I'm just... Se- yeah. What? I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you just said, but I'm still unnerved. Can you say that again, please? I said I'm after your lunch money. Yes. Uh, literally, that's all it needs to be at some point. It doesn't need to be some creepy new alien race. Granted, I feel like we have had a few plot threads. That might be coming up later. He's got teeth all over his head. (laughs) What? He's got teeth all over his head. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, 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 no. Believe me, I remember that shit for for the rest of my fucking life. Um, But when I say creepy new aliens, I mean, when I say creepy new aliens, though, Tristan, I mean, like, these, like, slithering, like, a team of them all coming together and, like, oh, no. Because I feel like some people, even though you and I find the teeth unnerving, I feel like maybe some people are like, oh, well, th- teeth? Oh, like, children's teeth? Like, oh, so st- like children are going to be scared of that? I'm like, dude, I'm fucking freaked out by that. What the fuck is on his face yeah. his teeth? <laughs> Because I feel like cause some people have been trying to say, and I don't know if this is coming from a sexist place because I don't know these people, but some people were saying that it felt like this season has been more like Sarah Jane Adventures than Doctor Who. And as someone who wow. saw Sarah Jane Adventures, other than the fact that there's more than one companion, and I guess you could say, oh, Doctor's a woman, I don't really see any comparison to either one. Yeah. Other than yeah. Other than the villain in Episode 5 being a bit too CGI for my liking. Yeah. No, really, the, the, the villain from episode the five. Alien on the spaceship. Yeah. Yes, the little one. Way too CGI for my liking. I'd rather it have been... The Saranga Conundrum. Right, that was the episode. Yeah. Thank you, yes. I'd rather it be a little bit bigger and just be a child in a suit or something oh. like that. Yeah. Because, like, I'm not saying... I'm, I was a little bit bigger. I'm not saying it'd be so huge because then, of course, you'd say, well, how could it slither through the, you know, the... Right. Everything. Yeah. Like, it had to be small, but it seemed like it was too small and chibi to be super frightening. Like, it seemed like an angry adipose. <laughs> hey, man. You see what I mean? If I saw angry adipose eating a spaceship, I would be terrified, too, you know? No, Nothing no, no, of course. No, in the moment, especially hearing, like, you can't touch it. So, like, granted, it's not going to even want to eat you, which also made it, in a way, less threatening. Like, it eats the things around you, so if you're on a spaceship, you're fucked. And don't touch it, because it's acidic or poisonous. So, like, yeah. yes, I'm not, I'm not saying that it was, was not a villain whatsoever. I'm just saying that if they, showing it so it's early as villain, well. Maybe, it's just hungry. <laughs> that's the issue, too. I thought they were going to go with that angle, and they didn't. Yeah. I mean... Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a wolverine. Like, yeah, it's hungry, but you also don't want to fuck with that thing because it will rip your face off. No, but, like, usually Doctor Who goes with, oh, my God, it's hungry. I'll talk to it. I'll sing its songs, and maybe we'll make sure that it doesn't eat us. You know, we're going we're gonna to do something. But it usually doesn't go, oh, no, it's a wild beast. Let's bomb it. I Well, see, the funny thing is... <laughs> Yes, they bom- like, they bombed it, but also it ate the bomb and was satisfied because that was a lot of energy, so it just kind of like floated off into space like, oh, I'm full now. <laughs> you know, and maybe I, maybe it didn't click with me properly because to me it came off as until it ate the energy and was jettisoned, and by the way, it's going to be fine in space. That's where it was originally. So it's, it can right. breathe in space. Yeah. It's fine. But maybe I didn't pay attention properly, but it came off to me as we're setting off a fucking bomb in its general direction, and then we're jettisoning it out into space. Oh, Doctor, look. It, 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 you know, it existed off of the energy. That's a good plan of yours. Yeah, part of my plan, the energy. Of course, well, yeah. Got it. It was, yeah. A, it was supposed to eat the bomb. Mm-hmm. Well, because the, the funny thing is I feel like, I feel like, you know, the doctor would have turned around. It's like, you know, in my head, past me probably would have just started a bomb and would have been fine with that, but I'm trying to be better now. 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, so I also I feel like every episode, not, well, I mean, not every, because episode six, the, um, the what was what was the sixth episode called? Because I know Punjabi was in the name, but I forgot yeah, the, the full the episode name. The Demons of the Punjab. The Demons of the Punjab, thank you. So yeah. in that one, I understand why he had to die. That made sense. Right. But I feel like everyone had to have like an not arbitrary, but I feel like, I don't know, like even though this doctor talks about caring about people and I truly believe that she does for some reason, they haven't had her. They haven't had her go into a big like, oh, no, not today. Like nine did, even though he did, even though to be fair, a lot of people did die around nine's time. But still, it feels like she hasn't had that big not today moment. Right. Which is which is weird because I'm not saying she doesn't care because she totally does. I mean, she definitely feels it like when someone dies. But it is strange that when the the woman piloting the ship who has you know a pilot's heart is what they called it, uh, yeah. where she's taking that medication to try to get down her her um, adrenaline because clearly <laughs> working that tech. I have a even though I've never done it before in my life for obvious reasons. We don't have that tech. I would feel like it could fucking kill you after a while. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That amount of stimulation and using your nervous system to fly a ship. Mm. Yeah. So what I'm getting at here is it felt like her death was just kind of like a, oh, that one sucked. Like after the first guy died really quickly, by the way, he died yeah. and she felt, I felt like the doctor was more like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's dead. And then she dies heroically. And it's like, ah, ooh, that one. Yeah, that uh, her name. Like, oh. like it didn't feel you like know, it was like a big thing for everybody. I guess. I mean, I her know. brother was. I mean, it was probably it was a bigger thing for you know her brother. He was there, but I mean, he also kind of had the idea that she wasn't well. You know, something was wrong too. She just wasn't telling him. But That's yeah, fair. No, I, I kind of get you. Yeah. Um, also, with that, with that wonderful more. Because yes, because that was, was just, unexpected. Yeah, to send out into space. Yeah. Yeah, and the worst part was I was actually I've been watching this with Anthony. Um like each week we kinda watch the episodes together. Um Yeah. But uh that episode I'm like, Wow, it's rare that, you know, the random passerbys that, you know, the doctor and companions run into are so cooperative and want to be helpful. I can see why the doctor is like, Wait, why are you <laughs> he's like, Can you please let me help you? And she's like, Mm, right. So this is how it feels. Okay, you're right. I'll, I'll let you help me. I'm like, wow, yeah. Not not all the people you usually run into are so cooperative and helpful. He's gonna. I looked over at Anthony. I'm like, I bet you he's the first one to die. And then the next commercial break, I'm like, I look over at him. I'm like, I fucking hate it when I'm right. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, it's one of those things where I have no problem being right because. I don't want to sit back and be like, well, if I'm right, that must mean that it's – because I'm not saying you're doing this. I'm saying in general because some people say, oh, I hate being right because it makes it seem like the show is predictable. I don't feel that way because I feel like in certain cases, maybe I think of something that's a little bit outside of the box in a sense. So for a, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. So like the, the well, no, episode I mean, seven. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, because right. the one with I Kablam. Mean, I was just – right, right. I knew in my head, in my heart of hearts, I was like, yeah, that's going to be – it's going to be the machine calling out for help, not the people. Because when they said, 10,000 people here, how can we track them down? I'm like, it's the machine. It's not the people. That's way too many people huh. to do in any kind of investigation. Yeah, okay. So, you know, it's funny. That was, I, didn't, I didn't guess it was the machine at first. See, that's what I'm that saying. But I'm not going to sit there. But I'm not going to sit there and be like, and it was so predictable that it was going to be the machine. Right. Like, no, I yeah. just... I just shot for something that maybe was out there. Like, it would probably be the machine. Because Doctor Who tends to, not always, but, like, sometimes goes a little bit out there. Like, who was calling for help? And it's like, it was the one you never expected. The machine. It was <laughs> Yeah, right? So, um, but still, so it's, yeah, for you, though, you were upset just because you were like, I liked that guy. He actually wanted to help, yeah. damn it. And he was very, was so very competent. Helpful. Damn it. 
Well, and also, yeah, no. I was just kind of following the token rule of Doctor Who. Usually, the first human that you see on screen at the beginning, at the very beginning of an episode, and the Doctor hasn't shown up yet, it's a good chance that person's going to die. Yes. Uh, question. Like, I'm talking like Chibnall. 90% chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Chibnall wrote this episode, right? Episode 5. I believe so. All right, then that means that Chibnall has seen Ruth's search, which you and I podcasted on. No, it just hit me out of nowhere. I don't know why, but like out of nowhere, because the episode is playing again in the background as we're talking about it. It's what I usually do when we do podcasts. And immediately Ruth's search came right back into my mind. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Which we've. Wow. You're right. (laughs) It does have that kind of feel to it, doesn't it? Uh, Tim yeah, Price but, and Chris Chibnall are the ones that worked on this, yes. Um, right, but in no, fun. in no, yes, and I would like to say in no way does that mean that Root Search was 100% original. We said that it felt by the books, but not that it was terrible by the books. It just right. felt painfully yeah. average. It was a fun journey, <laughs> but it wasn't like painfully average. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Where this episode. This episode of Doctor Who, I don't think it was painfully average, but I do think that the monster, at least seeing it so early, seeing how it looked, that's the only thing that I think brought the episode down. Although, I have to say, in all three episodes, the Doctor's humor was on point. Oh, definitely. There was, there's something about it that's just so hilarious, just like where you know you learn everything about this new creature, and it's the most... Not e- it's tiny, yes, but in a way the most horrifying thing. And she goes, well, on the bright side, though, I feel very informed. Yeah. And I'm just like, God damn it, Doctor. Or um, there was that one that really got to me. There was another one that I, I, for some reason it's just slipping right now. But she was just oh. just there for every yeah. single episode. Yeah. Um, you're a medic. Uh yeah, you're a medic. I'm the doctor. I'm doctor of medicine. Well, medicine, science, engineering, candy floss, Lego, philosophy, music, problems, people, hope, mostly hope. Yeah, Lego. that I one. Died. <laughs> yeah, no, hearing. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. When she said, "Oh, fifty-one's a good number." Yeah, it's the amount of uh, that ha- Alexander Hamilton. I forgot what he specifically did. If it was like legislative stuff, and she goes, "Oh, I love that show. I saw all nine hundred casts." Right. Oh, right. Yeah, Alexander Hamilton. Right. Yes. Oh, I was like, God damn it. Like, she's literally saying, like, the show goes on forever, and I've seen every yeah. new cast. Yeah. Oh, Anthony lost it at that one. That was his favorite line. Um, yeah. I. It was just, oh, my God. Um, oh, but, the other yeah, one was, that I really was, liked, um, okay. when they were looking at the information in the data bank, um, yeah, consent to device. Never engage the ting. Risk of risk of, risk to life ultimate. Well, on the plus side, I feel very well informed. <laughs> That's what I was saying. That one was my was was right. my favorite from this episode. Although I love the right. Hamilton one. Yeah, yeah. Um, for six and seven, again, there were some other ones that for some reason aren't coming to mind. But in general, I really loved uh, her a lot. I don't know why. I guess because it was new viewers watching. I don't know why she let Yaz go see her family. Granted, it was a great yeah. it, for the for us, and I mean this for everyone, not like new viewers, like every single person. It was a great learning experience for some people who, depending on what, on where you grew up, on how you learned history, you might not you might not have learned about that as accurately as you should have. Right. So I will admit, even though, yes, it's a TV show, it's still a nice place to start off. And also other people who are Muslim and who are uh, Hindu could also learn about their history, if they haven't heard about it from their family, through the lens of this TV show, depending on how young they are. So that's a good another yeah. good thing as well. So I think that as an episode, as a learning experience, it's beautiful. It's like Rosa. I enjoyed it. But just from a Doctor Who perspective, it's like, Doctor, why you let Yaz do this? Because you notice what happened. Yeah, well, that was the funny thing. She was so against it, and she's like, you know, just for a minute. You can't get involved. And then as she's like, yeah, I'm going to go help. I'm too nice. This she, Like, she turns to, you know, Graham and, um, oh, God. Um, 
Wow. I'm oh, come him. on. You Really? You can't remember his name, who I have also forgotten? Really? All right, thanks, Matt. You're no help. Oh, Ryan. Wow, there we go. The name's right in front you of You know me. what? You want to know why? Um, because when I look at him, and I'm seeing him on screen right now, I picture Graham saying, my grandson. Right, yeah. Um, um, anyway, so yeah. With oh, Ryan so yeah, and I Graham. Yeah, I to them too. It's like, I'm too nice. This is why, I, this is why we can't have nice things. God damn it. It yeah, no, it and the reason why by the way earlier I said about new viewers in particular is because not every viewer is going to know about the Rose situation. Right. Okay. Um not every viewer is going to know about what Rose and her dad and that whole thing. Not everyone right. will know. Yeah. But well, still like it's happened before. what I thought about too. <laughs> yeah. Granted it's yeah, not no, like not everyone will know yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. So that's fine, right? It's just one of those things where I was just like, but but like the doctor would know. Granted, well, as far as that idea, it's like I know you're smart, yes. I know you like you'll listen to what I have to say. Like I told you to be careful. You won't do anything stupid, right? God damn it. <laughs> well what's funny is at that point though, at least and this was why the doc, this doctor at this point was a bit smarter than what Eccleston did. At the very least, y- they all knew that nobody died there. Like, the grandma oh. was going to grow older, so it's not like Yaz was going to, like, shoot her grandma. It's like, no, Yaz, that's, that's, what are you doing? Like, Yaz, you, well, you mean, need to be born. I mean, that doesn't always work either. It's like, wait, but I'm, you know, I, you know, I was still born. Everything still worked, right? Well, it doesn't exactly work like that. You could still change that. No, 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 of course. But I'm saying that, like, it's not as if – what I'm saying is not as if it was, like, with Rose where it was like, oh, her dad died, so she had an incentive to save her dad. Right, yeah. Rose was already oh, born anyway. Right. Yeah. She wasn't they're, going they're, in it being like, I'm going to rescue my dad secretly. Exactly. Yeah, she was going into it like, I just want to see what my grandma was like. Right, exactly. Oh, the fuck it, what killed me was when her grandma was like, and yes, my favorite granddaughter. Her sister was like, what? And then her mom was like, Nan, we told you about this. We told you about doing that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, something I would like to say. So I know it would be a bit too on the nose. Some people might say, are you serious? But I thought that her nan was going to say something along the lines of like, oh, do you want to like, you know, do, like after saying, do you want to hear the story? And she said, no, thanks, nan. And she goes, well, I, I guess I understand why you wouldn't want to hear it. And like a little wink and nod. Yeah. I know to some people they're thinking it's a bit too on the nose. But here's the thing, right? Would I remember someone that I met years ago? Like, if, if yeah. I was, you know, in 60 years, am I going to remember someone that I met, like, yesterday and I didn't keep especially in touch with? Such, Probably. Yeah, especially well, such, but, like, a traumatic memory, too. Like, but, no, but that's why I would re- but but that's why I would remember it. That's what I'm saying. Because it's a traumatic memory, and literally when she asked about the watch, she's like, I do not want to talk about it because she fucking remembers Yeah. that her, what would have been her first husband, died. She remembered yeah. that shit. So you remember the people around that as well, even though it was such a small <laughs> – granted, as far yeah, as she knew, yeah. that person was family. But also her name was Yaz. I don't know if that's a – common show i mean arguably you could say yes but still like i don't know like certain things in my head would fit together where like it's kind of similar to the marty mcfly thing where like some people are like no but marty mcfly was only there with his parents for like a day or two and it was like during the point that they met that biff all that shit happened with the attempted rape like with all that shit happening at the same time you would think they'd be like you look like my you know you know marty you look like That guy that we met, Calvin Klein, who, by the way, your mom says, didn't fuck. (laughs) Oh, my God. No, but, like, you see what I'm saying? So, in this case, obviously, that would never come up. But the situation is, is that, like, it would just be a thing where, like, she has, I mean, granted, they were speaking a different language to them. So, it could be like, well, 
yes, doesn't know that language. So let it be fair, that was – because if you remember, they were speaking Punjabi. Right, yeah, and the – well, it's the translation, or the translator, but, yeah. I know, the Matrix. But it was just so funny because it was like, your Punjabi's good for foreigners. And it's just like, yeah, we're from England. Yeah, don't say that shit right now. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. It was not the time oh. to say this, white man. Really not yeah, the time I mean, to say this. Mm, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Why? Has England done something? Has England so- done something wrong to India? Just as Ryan's like, Grandpa. Grandpa. Ix, ix nay on the colonization nay. Hey, oh god. Like, uh, but but seriously though, it's interesting yeah, no. in that yeah no because like in in the Rosa episode it was flipped. It was just like we don't serve your kind. Yeah. Here it's just kind of like do not mention the English what? thing. Right, do not mention that you're British. Yeah. Uh. Um. Yeah, but um, but still, try to get it, though. Like, I, I know to some people, they're like, no, Matt, you wouldn't remember if you met someone last week, you know, in 60 yeah. years. Yes, you right? Like, I wouldn't. Oh, If oh, I was I 80, I wouldn't. Yeah, I yeah know, I'm not going to fucking thought, remember them. I, I thought you were making the joke of, like, please, Matt, you don't remember the people you met last week. <laughs> exactly, in about 60 oh. years. But... If if there was a traumatic event that it happened around, yeah, it, I I think maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'd be a little concerned. Like you I mean, look like know. the woman that I met 60 years ago around the time that my husband died, and you also been asking about that story recently, Yaz. It's fucking weird. Yeah. Also, your friends are fucking weird. Your mom says so. <laughs> your sister says so. But then again, I don't like your sister. But still, <laughs> I think Yaz. It's just kind of weird, that's all. Because, like, if she believes in demons, she could believe in magic. By the way, they believed in demons straight up. Like, it was just like, who who are those things? Yo, them y'all demons. Like, that was the the first reaction. There was no right. other... But it wasn't even, like, space aliens and shit. It wasn't even, like, out of this world. It was like, you're from the depths of hell. I mean, you're saying you don't Which, believe in demons, Matt? Um, I'm not saying that. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I just wanted to wait for a second. Um, <laughs> just looking up and down. I'm not saying that. All right, cool. So anyway, um, no, okay, but I. Fine. By the way, those, those two, those two suits in that episode, the quote unquote demons, you know, the alien assassins turned good. Yeah. Those suits were fucking amazing. The best suits this season. Yeah. And yes, over teeth guy. <laughs> over teeth. <laughs> yeah. No, that's. Fair. Yeah. They were definitely a lot more pleasant to look at too. They just because you know what it is too. They looked like like I don't like I, I say this not to like make fun of them, but I'm being dead serious. They looked like either they were from a Japanese superhero show, so they were about to like take on the fucking Power Rangers and right. rock their shit, or <laughs> two, they looked like living, breathing Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Oh my god! No, yeah, but like I mean, really though, they they looked like um the- oh god. What was its name? Like Lord D or something? The one that was like a dragon yeah. summoner back in the day? Yeah, Lord it, he, they, Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. He, he uh, like they both looked like some kind of like dragon like clan or like some kind of bat race or something. Like they just looked really fucking cool. And yeah. and the fact that they weren't assassins was only kind of sad because I wanted to see them like do some. Oh, also by the way, the effects. You, that they used when they were trying to disrupt people, and then you saw like their faces and everything. I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" Yeah. Like there was such an interesting vibe and atmosphere around them. The only thing that I say that that I'll say that I didn't like is that even though I was happy about the twist because like I don't know how the doctor would have actually stopped <laughs> them without cold blooded murder, but right. At the same time, though, it was weird that they're just like, "Look." We just want to witness these deaths. Then why did you hurt our ears? Uh, we thought you were going to unkill. Uh, like, I don't know what the goal, because they're not Time Lords. So, like, yeah, wouldn't right. it be nice if they saved them, dicks? Yeah. Like, well, that was, that was the funny part. It's like, we are just here to observe and talking about the flow of time and those who can't be observed. I'm like, did 
did you guys see like Gallifrey? Because like, I don't. I mean, <laughs> did you guys witness that? Because <laughs> that's kind of on that list. <laughs> Oh, no, I thought it was reversed. I thought because Gallifrey's back now, they're just having tea. Like, we've met the most wonderful people, Doctor. Oh, yeah. They just want to observe. Frankly, we're considering making them honorary Time Lords. Would you like the (laughs) name The Doctor? It's not being used here anymore. Just looks at The Doctor. Oh, God. They're just sipping Time Tea. So upset. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, uh... Um, no, but oh, what was I going to say though? I was going to say something. I forgot now. I thought yeah, I, I thought I, the I, Amazon I episode. Like... Oh wait, what were you going to say? Oh god. No, I was going to say I like their aesthetic too. Um, just the really um, faces like bats, but like multiple eyes and stuff. It was cool. I yeah, oh, yeah. that was it. I was kind of. It's like I'm I'm kind of glad they weren't the bad guys, but I'm also sad that they weren't the bad guys because they would have made awesome bad guys. <laughs> oh, well, right. yeah, I was saying was that the joke. It's like, but Doctor, the aliens aren't the bad guys. It's just humanity. Oh, <laughs> that seems like to be a common theme. This series. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, don't. <laughs> No, because actually, here's what's interesting. It seems like the theme this series is, don't worry about those aliens because of racism. And I feel like that's just the kind of thing. Don't worry about those aliens because of corporatism. Um, and, I, and by the way... You have your I, own problems to worry about terrestrial-wise. Basically. Um, but what I will say, though, I'll, I will say this, line? though. <laughs> Where is the fucking line? Um... I do think, even though they weren't the bad guys, which, again, the twist was only odd because they set it up so quickly, that, like so much, that I probably should have assumed that they weren't the bad guys. Uh, but I'll say this, though. I do think because this show has, you know, time travel, all that shit, and they mention that they used to be bad guys, we're hopefully going to see them I say in the future, in our future, but in their past. So I assume the Doctor will one day travel to a point where it's like, oh... You guys haven't, oh. Doctor Who, days of future past. How how terrible would it be if the Doctor has to choose between letting, like, the comet hit or saving them all? That That's a Doctor Who episode for you. Yeah. So, yeah, because that, that's what they said. They said that when they came back, the whole planet was destroyed. And it like it had, like, an impact, like a comet or, like, Frieza throwing a fucking death ball at the, at the planet. Right. Seriously, though. No, like, I sat there and I was like, okay, who's been watching Dragon Ball Z? What do you mean, Matt? They were just assassins from a... Oh. Oh. <laughs> and then the whole planet was just... Oh, um, oh God. No. <laughs> the best trained under hit. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but, by the way, the transporter... You know what I've been really enjoyed? The transporter tech that they've been using throughout every episode. Like, making it seem like transporting isn't the biggest of deals. Right. Well, I mean, for them, it's not. No, but I like that because I feel like some seasons just don't really use it as much. Like, they'll have, like, I'm not saying that they only use, like, alien beams or something to beam people up, but, like, they don't use tech to transport people other than, like, uh, or they never show the tech. It's just like, oh, you know, I, I... Oh, do you have a new what's it calls it? Yeah, I have a new what's it calls it. Oh, that's crazy. And then you never really see what right. it is. In this case, though, they're showing different, like, things that are being used to transport people around. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, also, I like that it in all of these episodes, obviously not episode six, but in five and seven, it's going against the flow of automation. Right. Because it's... It's understand like yeah, they could fix the problem, even though they wouldn't be able to fix it without the doctor in episode five. But still, they could fix the problem. But the machines were just going to be like, well, we can't let this thing land on the planet, so we're going to have to kill everyone on board. It's like, aren't you a fucking medical, like evac, like right, unit? Yeah. Like, whoa. I mean, but we have to save everyone on the planet instead. It's like you could shoot at it, perhaps, or contain it somehow, or do, or like what the doctor did. No, we're just going to have to destroy everything. Uh, like, information. Fuck. You will now detonate. 
basically. Like, you kind of sit back and you're like, uh, you know, maybe no. <laughs> so that's the thing. If there were humans involved in that process, of course, they'd be like, we'll see anything we can do until, like, the last minute. But that ship was, like, real gung-ho about fucking blowing the shit sky high. <laughs> Yeah. No, like this the first whiff of trouble, the ship was like, you know what? Suicide. It was like, Holy shit! Chill the fuck out. Oh, the male pregnancy was a wonderful thing, simply due to the fact that because it was a different society, he looked at them weird. Right. Yeah. Which was wonderful. Where it was just like, Oh, you know it's a boy? Well of course boys give boys you know, boys give birth to boys and girls give birth right. to girls. Why? What would what else would it be? Oh huh. well on earth uh, we can't do that. Oh that's weird. Oh wow. That's how does that work? Um Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was hilarious because it just goes to show you like, hey, people are different, so be it. Right, yeah. So that's something that I enjoyed. Um, also, Graham acting like he was so smart. Like, when you're off on YouTube, I'm watching educational programs. All right, then how do we do this? Yeah, I looked away at the... I was all right at the screamish fist. Yeah. Oh, God, I died. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Thanks, Graham. Of the, the midwife, I think it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, some... I forgot what the show was called, but yes, midwife was in the name. Um... So, yes, yeah, so I do think that while the villain I didn't enjoy in Episode 5, everything else I think really did pop. I think that the characters worked well together. I wish we would have seen more of the android doing something because of the fact that, like, when you say he can't be – well, he can't touch – like, he can be – rather, he can touch the thing because he is right. an android, therefore it is not poisonous to him. I thought a role, or I thought he was going to have some big sacrifice and be eaten. Because he's right. not organic. Um, and neither of that happened. And I was like, so you were just kind of around. Yeah. Well, that was, I guess that's the funny part for me. Or, like, it makes me think, like, yeah, you know, have the android deal with it. And, like, the android looks over, oh, okay, so just because I can't be dissolved by it, I have to deal with it. Well, Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, typical. Human. I mean, he. Well, no. I mean, he he was he was pretty chill about the whole thing. He wasn't a sassy no, android. He was. You're you've been watching too much uh too much solo. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> I loved her in solo, but still, he was this android a bit more like a relaxed data. From yeah. Star Star Trek Generation, but even yeah, more I relaxed think, because I think his D- Data was more did like, have what? Right. Well, yeah, Data could have emotions at times, but um, yeah, I think it was he was more. I am here to protect her and her well-being. I am not programmed to take on these other responsibilities. <laughs> right, but if she orders him, he probably would have done more. Oh yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, but yeah, so I, I, like, I didn't think the episode was bad. I just think that the villain just wasn't as villainous. That's just my take on it. But I'm happy that the doctor didn't destroy it or kill it because it's still a creature that is just hungry. That's all it knows. Like it was like, it's one of those things where like, you know, you had the machine basically tell them like, it wants to kill. And it's just like things like, no, 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 I don't, I don't eat you. Like, I'm just trying to eat right. whatever is around me that I can get. Yeah. Now, if you're on a ship, I'm not going to think about my, you. Right. It's not my fault that if you touch me, you, I'm poisonous to you. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, like I didn't sit back one day and was like, you know what I should be poisonous to? Humans or organic life forms. That's what I should be poisonous to. Um, like, it's just something they developed through probably like an evolutionary, just, you know, or like a like a chain. that they eat, too. Probably. I only say that because of the fact that, like, if they can be grabbed, they would be thrown yeah. everywhere away from people. Fair. Yeah. So I'm sure somewhere down the line something just evolved into it being like, oh, I'm going to touch this and I'm poisoned. Well, I guess <laughs> um, we can't be fucked with. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so well, I don't really have anything else to say. Metal that it eats, it's probably, it's, it makes sense that it's so damn acidic. I mean, that's fair. Chemically speaking. 
Right, right. So yeah, I don't I don't really have anything else to say about episode five other than yeah. <laughs> Just I other than like, it was what? Well, I did like at the end when the you know, the Android and the brother were able to kinda of come to terms like just be like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry I gave you so much shit, but, like, you know, I was having, you know, I wanted to help my sister and she wouldn't let me help. Then, you know, I said some shit to you. I'm sorry. And, like, the android, yes, you did. And, like, stops for a second. It's like, but you were, you know, trying to help her in your own way, so I understand. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like that. I also like the fact that, they got the doctor away from the TARDIS and even took the energy out of the out of the sonic screwdriver because again i hate not all the time i get that it can happen sometimes but there are certain episodes throughout the years because you and i have seen every like new who episode uh, not yeah. really every old school episode, but even with some of the old school ones that I've seen, the doctor can sometimes just be in a situation where it's like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Well, thankfully, my sonic screwdriver can do every fucking thing. But doctor, I'm going through a divorce. Sonic screwdriver! <laughs> like, just I mean, at least everything. Now a sonic Swiss Army knife, so. Right, no, but, so, but anything, or though. It's like, actually... doctor, my kid doesn't love me. Like, doctor, sonic screwdriver! <laughs> the headmaster yeah. of this school, Sonic Screwdriver, baby! And everyone's like, yay! <laughs> it does everything! Other than wood. <laughs> Basically. So, that's the issue with me and the screwdriver. It just does everything sometimes. You, kind of like Batman with with his tools. Yeah, with what? all the tools. Right. Could you imagine one episode, like, the doctor's just like, look... I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling that great. think I got a cold. think I got a space cold. Uh, here's my Sonic. Just go take care of it. <laughs> not What's not funny that is, any doctor ever would, but like. I mean, it would be funny if that's just like, like if the doctor does get like super duper sick and I they have like to solve was, it with only a Sonic. Right. I feel like that was that would be a joke that Twelve would make, but not actually be serious. He'd be like, "You know what? Fine. You think you can do my job? Here's the screwdriver. Go do it." <laughs> They're like, they what, just do wait, it serious? because it's wait, that good. Serious? Seriously? No, of course not. What are you deaf? Just takes uh, it back. No, yeah, I I think that was fine. Like, I had no problem. Like, I was happy with it. What was odd is how they ended the episode, only because I just kind of sat there, and I was like, but, but what about the TARDIS, though? <laughs> yeah. And then the next episode, they act like everything's fine. Like, what do you mean? We have the TARDIS. Why wouldn't we? It's like, because you fucking I mean, left it in a fucking dump. What? They said they could transport them back, no problem. Right, but what if someone took it? It was at a dump that people scavenge at, and they've been asleep for four days. That's fair. By the time they get back, it would be more than a week. Right, they went, so they go back, whoever scavenged it, they murdered, and then they got, and then everything was fine. Nothing happened. I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) Immediately, Anthony calls in. Even though we're recording this in advance, Anthony Toto calls in. Actually, guys, it's going to be a big finish. Thank you, Anthony. Oh, my God. The guy they God. murdered. Just the big finish. I know what you did last TARDIS. Just the guy oh coming God. back to be like, we murdered that man. Uh, no, but seriously, though, I I, I just I'm, I was kind of sitting there, though, and I was like, that's a weird place to end it. Like, in prayer? That was a little odd. I mean... Not, not that the prayer is the issue. It was just a very odd yeah. way to end it because it was like, let's end oh, it in prayer, and then they finish the episode. And I'm like, but right. like, the TARDIS mm-hmm. though. And then the next week yeah, we're supposed right. to just be yeah, like, yes, TARDIS and fly off, right? Yeah. It was just a weird spot. That's all. Maybe because I'm yeah. also watching this on BBC America's um, on its uh, on demand service. I'm sure you guys probably saw it, like on Anthony's DVR. It kind of just faded to black randomly and then went into credits, and I was just like, that's just weird. Like, right. maybe it didn't fade. Maybe it just cut with a boom, 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 boom. Like, 
transition sound effect. I don't know, but the way I watched it, it just faded to black as it showed the space station, and I'm just like, um, like, y'all are, where's the TARDIS? Like, we kind of need that to go on new adventures, unless, yeah. like, I would, he, that, by the way. You know, the doctor's just like, uh, so, yeah, about my ship. <laughs> Now, now, I would like to mention, I have no problem, even though I do like uh, now that it seems like Doctor Who is getting back to that point where they're mentioning random adventures at the start of episodes, like a bunch of shit happens in the middle that we never see. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So I'm happy that we're getting back to that. But I would actually have no problem if, a bit like they did with Bill and the Doctor when they first showed them, uh, like Bill and a Doctor working together at the school, I'd have no problem if the Doctor was like ship bound and like actually being shown to have to try to get her TARDIS back, like she did in the first two episodes. I'd have no problem if that was an actual thing that went on for a bit longer than just one episode. Right. Like that would interest me if the Doctor wasn't even just like Earth bound, just kind of like uh, I am searching for my TARDIS. We're just going through space, getting stuck in random adventures, searching for my TARDIS. Yeah. For a little bit longer than two episodes. Because literally, like, right. it happened in the first episode, and I was like, oh my god, how long is this going to be? And then the second one, they're transported to a random ass place, and they get the TARDIS back just fine. And I was like, oh, that was. All right, cool. Right. <laughs> that was real quick. All right, cool. Um, but anyway, episode. Moving on from episode five, though, talking more about episode six. Um, I do think that it was a good educational episode. I enjoyed it for that reason. Uh, when it came to the quote-unquote villains, again, the aliens weren't the villains. The real villains were – it's funny to say, like, it's only funny to say it out loud, like, the real villains were racism. But it actually was. It isn't a fucking joke. Like, it was this divide that shouldn't have been there in the first place, but it was something that they couldn't really change. So it's interesting that the Doctor kind of had this weird – like, I don't know, there's this weird flip in this episode. That's the issue that I think I have, where, like, you see the Doctor, and it's kind of like, well, okay, yes, we can't change anything. Wait a minute, he's going to die, especially by aliens? All right, we definitely have to change that, even though clearly he was never going to live by Yaz, like, by her accounts. Right. Like, he had to die eventually, I hate to say this, unless her nan, like, cheated. Like, you know, he had to die eventually. Right. Well, I mean, I think... Because... That- the thing yeah. was, it's like he would. History needed to follow its course, and he needed to die of that cause. Like, if it was the aliens intervening, like the doctor's idea, it's like, okay, the species is intervening. Even if it's only this one thing, it could mess with history. Even if he's still meant to die, that's not yes, that's not the right she... way. Exactly, because yes, yeah, she doesn't know how exactly she is meant to die, and that's right. fair. That is fair. Um, so that's the one thing. I, I do admit, I get, that's fair. Um, another thing, because I'm trying to think of some other stuff as well, just, um, oh, the guy, the, the brother essentially getting radicalized, that was very interesting to yeah. see because that's not, like, that's not new. Like, we've seen that happen before. Like, you know, right. the guy's just reading pamphlets and he turns on his own brother and it's in essentially <clears throat> like a Civil War type situation simply due right. to the fact yeah. that it's like, well... We shouldn't be mixing. It's just like, ooh, that's right. that's not new, even, and sadly, right. that's what it was said it's, it's, earlier too. It's like just because you know, just because a new line was drawn today doesn't mean anything any different. We've lived this way for hundreds of years. And then he's like, but it does. And it's like, hmm. Oh. I'm looking at the flag right now. It's red. The flag's red. Like, it's just, like that yeah. a red flag went up immediately when he yeah. was talking about that shit. Like, I'm oh, just yeah. like, um, mm. uh, yeah, so it's sad yeah, that it I didn't see funny. it coming. Yeah, well, it's, that's the interesting part of the episode for me. I kind of had the idea, I'm like, oh, God, it's going to be his brother that does it, isn't it? But what I didn't see was that he also had killed the, the holy man that was coming in. I'm like, oh, oh, wow, this goes even further. It's like, no, I killed him because it's it's terrible that he would, you know, you know, uh, authorize the union between you two. He's better off dead. I'm like, oh, wow, this is this is this just got worse. All right. 
Yeah, no, like, I thought it was going to be a thing where, like, oh, if it's not the aliens, then, you know, he's an older man. I'm sure he's healthy, but, you know, sometimes people have heart attacks. Like, he just died naturally, and it seemed as if – no, I'm not kidding. I'm being serious. Like, what else is it going to be if it's not the aliens? And if they're – the what they put on him, like that essence, that was actually them, like – kind of like putting an ash of like a like a cross in a sense, you know? Like it was because it was yeah. their people. So right. it was kind of like an anointing. It wasn't like a, this is poisonous or like we've scratched you and, right. you know, our poison has landed on you. Like, no, it was more of like an anointing situation. Like, oh, we've, we've seen this. Also, You've been marked. Be like a part, yeah, I think it was supposed to be like a part of their essence too that they take back and then put into the machine, the hive. Oh, right, of course. So what I was interested in at the end of the episode, I thought we were going to see another face that we were going to freak out about, like Grams or something. Mm, Yeah. Because they showed a bunch of faces, and I was like, are we going to see, like, the doctors pop up? Right. By the way. I wonder if somebody's face was in there and we just didn't see it. That would be interesting. But, yeah. Are you... Are you calling for DVR, ma'am? DVR. <laughs> Matt, with his amazing remote, becomes DVR man. He has the power. I have the power to pause. <laughs> so uh, I'm doing that right now. You think I'm fucking not? No, uh, so... I you Exactly. I can even slow this down as well. God, these suits still look fucking amazing. Anyway, what I was going to say is, <laughs> while I don't want to think about the day that Jodie Whittaker stops being the Doctor, if it does happen within the next five to fifteen years, I'm kidding. Probably, ho- hopefully, at the very, at the, at hopefully five though. I'll say, but still, when that does happen, Tristan, I hope these guys are there to see her be laid to rest as the doctor in a sense, because it would be odd if you introduce them and like you never show them again. It'd be weird. That would be interesting. Like like, I'm not saying every single, yeah, I'm not saying every single villain we've seen or, you know, alien we've seen has to come back because I'm not saying that, you know, we have to, although it would be fun to see ads for Kablam throughout the rest of the series. That would be funny. But, but still, I'm not saying we have to see every single one come back, but when you introduce them talking about, see, these are the kinds of aliens where I actually, in a way, don't like. I don't hate, like, I'm happy that they weren't villainous and they're actually nice. That's sweet, because it shows you not every alien. But the reason why I bring this up is because it's weird when you bring up new aliens, and then they are in, in all of time and space kind of right. situation, you know? Because it makes you think, why haven't we seen them before? Now, I know it's very hard to make new Doctor Who villains. I totally get it. But that's why if you – know, I'm just not a big fan. I'm not going to say like if I were writing Doctor Who because that's silly because I'm not. But if I, as a fan, I don't know if I would want to make a situation where it's a, oh, they've been there all along, kind of like a right. silence thing. Or in this case, yeah. you know, these, these aliens. Or in another case to think about as well, even though it wasn't an alien, someone like Clara who's just like, oh, I've helped out every doctor ever. It's just like, okay. Like I just want to make some, some, someone or something that large that it can be throughout right. all of time and space. Even something like the Weeping Angels I think was a bit too big, but I still loved the concept so much that I would never erase them from existence. Right. Uh, yeah. but, but still – even something like the Weeping Angels is just a little is a thing where it's just like the Weeping Angels can be everywhere at once all the time. It's like okay, then why weren't they in this episode? M- Moffat's not writing okay. anymore, so uh, they, they were his. So stop it. It's like all right, yeah. well why weren't they? Why weren't they being transported as little <laughs> tiny ornaments, little tiny angel ornaments in Kablam? Wouldn't that have been scary? Oh, well, um. They, they they weren't why why would why would they be there? Well, why weren't um, you know, in Silence of the Library? Why weren't those uh, Vasha Narada there? I mean, they're selling books. It's essentially an Amazon copy paste. Aren't they selling okay. books? Wouldn't there be yeah, Vasha Narada in the forest. darkness? On a specific forest. Although what? I would love for them to come back because they're one of my favorite monsters of all time. It would be interesting. I don't know what new ground you could have with them, but it would be interesting. No, I'm only bringing yeah. it up because like. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that um 
hold on one second. I have to pause this, and then I have to go. Damn it, no. Ah, this DVR, it doesn't do like 116. So if I uh, if I pause and then fast forward, it just fast forwards normally. Damn it. Uh, Sorry, because I'm trying to see the heads floating and be like, which one of you is a future head? That's a weird uh, sentence. Which um, one of you is a future dead? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. No, they all look super duper generic. Okay. I don't think there's anything hidden. I mean, don't worry, guys. You can probably find some video of someone on YouTube who circled something and said, a future version of the Doctor? Or something oh, like God. that. <clears throat> you know those. You know, I'm sure there's one. Oh, we, don't, like, we don't have a YouTube channel, but still, I'm sure there's one channel that's done something like that already. But still, either way, Tristan, um, no, no hidden faces there, sadly. Unless you could say all of them are Zordon. But other than that, uh, no hidden faces. Um... I was gonna say yeah. So when it com- when it comes to like these aliens, that's the that's the one issue that I have. But like I said earlier, I love their suit design, and I would like to see them again. Like I do think that when it comes to a new person writing Doctor Who, one of the greatest things they can do is make continuity within their own series that they've written. Right. And I think. I hope Chibnall understands that, and this is him laying the groundwork for future seasons that I assume he will be writing. So that, yeah, that will be amazing if we can see some of these people that we've seen, or some of these you know aliens that we've seen over the past seven episodes, come back in some form or another. That would be really nice. What I find interesting though is, uh, it seems like we don't have any ties this season. Because usually every season we have, other than like maybe like one or two thus far, we've had uh, every series from you know New Who onward, we've had something tying everything together. We've had like a Bad Wolf, we've had a Saxton. Uh, with uh, with the last series, we had the we've you know oh silence. who's in the who's wait what? We've had a silence. Of course. In in the last series we had even though it wasn't the entire one, we had who is behind the you know, this this guarded wall and it was, you know, the master. Right. Sort of. But still, um it's still but like the reason why I say that like with such uh is because I thought it was gonna happen like the whole season and then they just copped out at like four or three. And I was like, Oh, that's yeah. really quick. Cool. Uh so in this case though, we don't have that. Because I thought we were going to get the alien race from the first one, potentially, you know, seeing them again, but that didn't happen. Yeah. We didn't get, um, we didn't get the greaser, you know, John Travolta from episode from the Rosa episode coming back. Right. We haven't gotten the prince, uh, or the soul, uh, the the ruler from episode two, the one that created that entire crazy war game situation. We haven't seen him oh, again. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, from the ghost Yes, yes. Here. Yes, yes, yes. We didn't see him. Then the jumped to episode... Oh. Yeah, episode four was Arachnids, which we haven't seen yet. But And granted, they could all yeah. be gone, even though I know that some escaped. But we still haven't <laughs> seen them yet. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and of course, you know, we're not going to see anything come back from five, six, or seven just yet, of course. But still, I do wonder if this season may be... Uh, Chibnall and others like the, the the theme is just let's just make good episodes. We don't have to have anything tying anything together, right? Other than the characters, you know, which of course Chibnall is from what I've seen, from what I've not seen, from what I've heard from Broadchurch is good at doing. He's good at doing characters mm-hmm. and growth and things like that. So maybe he is just trying to have like Ryan and Graham become better buddies through his nan's death. Maybe they're trying to have both Ryan and Yaz learn more about their cultures through the eyes of traveling with the doctor instead of just, even though going into space and time in the future or in the past, because you and I were talking about this last, uh, no, it wasn't even the last podcast. It was uh, the first two that we did where we said that it would be very interesting if the doctor stays in like 2018, but goes to another galaxy quadrant and people are just like, yeah, like we clearly like the Earth would never interact with them. They would never interact with the Earth, but they are humanoid, and they're like, oh yeah, Earth, we never heard of it, but they're technically an alien race. It doesn't have to be right. in the future. 
You know, that's yeah. also another thing they can do as well. But it doesn't have to just be all of that. It can be let's travel into Earth's history and have a little bit of educational bits here and there because the original Doctor Who had those as well. So why not have that here as well? Um, I would admit, though, at least going forward, more al- aliens would be nice. Or yeah. more, yeah, actually, no, more aliens. But I do think that this series, as of right now, like as of this entire series thus far, I'm okay with hearing like, oh, here are some, here are some spiders that grew bigger. Why? Because pollution fucking sucks. Don't do that shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, treat your workers better. You know, like we need to treat workers better because look at this asshole. Look at what he did. Fuck him, but also treat workers better. Okay, fair. Like, you know, like don't like automation. That sucks. It can kill you. That is true. Any type of malfunction can kill you. That is true. So I like the themes, but I would hope that next series, or even for the for the New Year's special uh, that's coming up, they don't focus on just random people doing shitty things. Oh, also speaking of, even uh, I talked about the arachnids. I even talked about the dude who was that mogul. Or I say call him a mogul, but that businessman who might actually run for president. We may have a series of Doctor Who next year that has him running for president. Yeah. Oh God. Because because it's going to come out late 2019 into 2020. Right. He could have his entire campaign throughout the series. Yeah. God, that would be fucking funny. Anyway. Oh God. But it's still. Yeah, basically. Although he was American, so he would he would run against Trump. Oh God, it's another Saxon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the U.S. remakes are always the worst. Anyway, um, I I mean, I'm not wrong. Um, um, what I find odd is uh, another thing too about this uh, this episode, Demons in the Punjab. That the aliens, I guess, like, again, earlier on, we think, oh, they're so, you know, scary because they're trying to stop the doctor, you know, from saving people and everything. Or at the very least, stop the doctor from getting near them. And then once they're like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. All right, listen, whoever you are, I'm the doctor. Oh, wait, we know that name shit. But, like, listen, we're just trying to witness. Like, it just took a while. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, they could have just, I know, like, there would be no dramatic tension and, you know, the uh, uh, suspension of disbelief, but still, if their intentions are pure, you could just say them. True. What are you here well, to do? We're here to watch people die. Okay, wait a minute. We understand how that sounds. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me try that again. <laughs> right. Give me one more chance, please. <laughs> basically, basically. But you see where I'm coming from, <laughs> the though, right? They're being like, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to try and rephrase that. If I don't like the next one, you're getting off. <laughs> Basically. Is there anything else you want to say about episode six in particular? or? Um, no, I think I got everything I needed for six. Oh, God. What the, the, the joke that got me when the doctor said, yes, all the stuff about me regenerating. Ha <laughs> ha. Such, such comedy. That was completely oh. a joke. None of that is serious. Ha <laughs> ha. I was like, God damn it, that's really funny. Right. Because, yeah, like, they're looking at her like, you clearly are not talking about regenerating. Because I'm sure the doctor had made some kind of, type of joke about, like, ooh, I'm a woman now. Never really been in, like, a like a girl circle yeah, like this. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she made, it like, oh, God. Yeah, I forget the words exactly, but it's like, oh, this is nice. And it's like. Uh, you know, first time being a woman, yeah, and the mother looks over like, excuse me, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she has to look at her like, um, pass. <laughs> oh, right, yes. All about changing identity and, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. But, um, oh, so uh, before we move on talking about the Kablam episode, I want to ask you, which one of these was your favorite? Hmm. Because it's hard for me, because even though the monster that was in 5 was iffy to me, I really liked 5. But then, but then, 6 came along, and even though I do think that the aliens were a letdown, 
I really enjoyed the tension, and I was worried about what was going to happen, not with Yaz's grandma, for obvious reasons, but surrounding that, I actually did want to know what the mystery was. Like, I yeah. assumed he was going to die, because, you know, the whole th- the, the thing was cracked and everything, but, like, yeah. well, the, the watch, but still, like, what is happening here? I was confused. So, I, I, so I have to say, like, that one kind of came in, I was like, oh, I don't know, but then... I think even though, yes, the villain in Seven was a bit of a letdown, I was happy, I think, that it that it wasn't the same old, oh, the machines are clearly having issues like they always do. Because it's Doctor Who. Right. The machines are always having issues. Like, Doctor Who has been anti-automation before automation was even a big of a thing as it is now with tech. Right, yeah. Like, yeah, it's been anti-automation I mean, for years. So I don't know. It's really rough, man. Yeah. No, these were all really good episodes to me. Um, I guess... I guess in the end I'd have to go with Kerblam because it's made me terrified of another household object. Because the one line where she... Um, the doctor goes, uh, uh, look, this has... Um, Bullies, people disappearing, and uh, conspiracy written all over it. And that's a combination that I cannot let alone. <laughs> um, like, st- there are statues. Uh, uh, yeah, there are statues, mannequins, and now bubble wrap. Those are three things that I can no longer go near. Yeah, I ship out stuff for our eBay, and that's fucking rough. I use oh. bubble wrap all the time. Yeah. My grandma just likes to just pop bubble wrap in the house. Now I'm going to have to fight her physically. Yeah, that was that was the worst part at the end, too. Grandma's, they just look over. It's like, you, you want to pop that? Dude. No, what Ryan had earlier. <laughs> but Ryan had earlier, so it's fine. How funny would it have been if they exploded in the TARDIS in the first five minutes? <laughs> Oh man. BBC BBC is just like, all right, we have to have the doctor regenerate. How are we going to do it? Amazon parcel, oh. bubble wrap, five minutes, explosion. All of the companions die. New series next week. Oh my god. Um that would be <laughs> you see, you know what's funny? That's something that, and I don't want to, I, I sometimes feel like when we talk about Doctor Who, we just shit on, like, American TV shows. Oh, actually, not just Doctor Who. We talk about, like, anime sometimes, too. But, like, that does seem like a very American thing to do. Like, ooh, well, you know, these these numbers aren't exactly what we were looking for, so let's just murder everyone for, like, a cool season finale, and we'll come back next year with something intriguing and different. And it's just like... No, because, like, it does seem like the end of, like, an action TV show, like, just a huge explosion fades to black to be continued. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm happy Doctor Who isn't doing that because something that I think I, I think I told you this before, but we didn't actually get into too much more depth, sadly. Uh, we talked about this a bit during the uh, – during Kikaku Corner because we talked about the Doctor Who – uh, Christmas special not happening rumors and so we didn't really mention the ratings much which I want to talk about a little bit because it's interesting depending on what source you go to either the ratings are oh the ratings are abysmal and they're not doing better than Capaldi or people are taking other ratings into account that certain sources aren't and they're doing better than Capaldi they're doing better than it's been doing since like Tenant. right yeah also another thing people don't think about as well that I I don't know if I see people talk about is a lot of a lot of the youngins, a lot of the youths, a lot of people in general, like they actually use other sources to watch not just Doctor Who, but like other series that you and I would never use. So like what sources are that, right? Well, like looking at something like maybe even like the PS4, depending on what you're watching, some people would rather pay like a dollar an episode or like 15 bucks for an entire season because they don't have cable. Right. Yeah, because you so they're can like, watch fuck it, it on Prime Video. Yeah. That's another option, yeah. Well, not the newest season, I thought. But you can watch older ones on Prime Video. Unless you can watch uh, the newest season. Maybe. I have no idea. I think you can... I, well, not the one that just came out, but, like, the other... Because I was looking at IMDb for a different, like, little... Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah no, but I know about like, Prime Video. At, 
Because Courtney yeah, and I used to watch of, original like, Doctor Who. It's just like, yeah. oh, like, yeah, um, like classic, I don't know, or like older episodes of New Who, I'm not sure. But the current season is up, I'm, yeah. Okay, I'm, but I'm literally telling you, Tristan Walter, please sit down. I'm telling you right now, Courtney and I used to watch New Who, Series 1, on Amazon Prime oh. Video. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Yes, yes. No, because I said we used to watch Who. I said right. old Who, though, so that was that was my fault because it made it sound like I said I meant classic. Not true. But, like, we watched some of Series 1 on – and it had Series 1 to – I don't know how many, to be fair. But, yes, we were watching Series 1 on – on Amazon Video because she's like I've never I've only seen like a, a like the she's like I only seen Classic Who on Netflix she was telling she was telling me she was like my dad said I should watch all of Who in order and I was like don't fucking do that like yeah. I answer like, dad I was like but don't do that that's way too much Who you should watch New Who and then go back if you want right. and so we started with with Eccleston God yeah. I cried at Dalek she was like why are you crying I was like. Ah. Oh God! Oh right! Oh yeah! No, me and Anthony had made a joke while we were watching this, uh, watching Kerblam uh, tonight actually. And uh, I I look at him and I'm like, imagine if they replaced the postman, the delivery men, with Daleks. <laughs> that's w- and th- by the way, I would like to note that's something that I'm super happy that they didn't do. Now I'm not saying. Yeah that there shouldn't be a Dalek cameo this season because I believe they're contractually obligated to. And I I personally have no pro- – no, because I'm pretty sure they are. I'm pretty sure it's in the contract. That's why it shows up every season. I'm pretty sure the negotiations they have with the creators of the Daleks because at the time, because of how old the Daleks are, there's a co-ownership there. Same thing with something like Superman right. where it's not just a DC thing. It's also the people who created Superman. Uh, like, because if, think about how old both Superman and the Daleks are. So I'm pretty sure the contract is every year they have to show a Dalek in some capacity. That's why certain seasons, even when Moffat wanted to kind of like lay off, they just showed like a Dalek stock kind of looking at the Doctor randomly at one point. Like right. with Smith. Where they didn't have any Dalek that season other than like towards the end when they had like one broken Dalek looking at him. And he was right. having a conversation with it, like, do you know who I am? Like, that whole big scene. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure that happened in series, oh, fuck. Uh, that was a, oh, fuck, was a very controversial oh, season. Wow. Yeah, very controversial I don't think I've seen that um, season. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Sh- <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that would have been beautiful. Um, oh. Series, I'm going to go with series eight. I'm going to say it was series, nope. Hmm? I don't remember. No, I'm, I'm being serious. I don't know which series it was because I don't think it was. Because how many? Yeah, how many series oh, did Smith okay. had? He had six, seven, eight. When did when did Smith regenerate? I'm being serious here. <sighs> yeah, I hear you fucking typing away. Two. Wait a minute, is, who is that at the computer? Is it Internet Man? Typing Internet for justice. Man, I hate my existence. <laughs> well, he's on the Internet, everybody. Um, he, now we know he's for real. His powers are not myth. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so, I have to say, this episode, and again, this is another reason why I feel like I don't know why the doctor didn't freak out over this. The fact that that girl died, I think her name was Kira. Yeah, Kira. The fact that she died broke my soul. Oh, yeah, that was that was rough. Like I speaking of spe- speaking of being like I hate myself, like I sat there and I was like, why am I watching this right now? Like that in a way that felt uncharacteristically Doctor Who. And no yeah. one kind of addressed it. Now, I'm not saying Doctor Who can't go against its mold or against the grain. I'm not saying that people don't die in Doctor Who. But she was way too broken and battered of a human being to not have her live to fight another day. Like, it was just, I don't know, man. Like, it was just really sad to just be like, yeah, I never knew my parents. I try to have an optimistic view on life. 
Also, I've never gotten a gift in my life other than a work gift. And now I was lured down to this place due to another work gift, and it killed me. And I'm like, right. this isn't this, – this is – this is sad. No one's acknowledging this. Like even the doctor was just using it as a way to be like, see, the computers did that to make you see why you were doing something wrong. And I'm like, the doctor should be like, all right, because they just killed someone, we got to shut this shit down right now. Right. Uh, like okay. 11 had five, six, and seven. And then oh, fuck. Uh, oh, Eight, that's times. okay okay right that's why I got confused for a second because for some reason my brain went 6, 7, 8 instead of 5, 6, and 7 um, right. okay oh, and of course the Chris a bunch another... yeah because he even got the 50th too right yeah okay cool so um, but yeah so still uh, when it came to when it came to this episode with the doctor I, I and not even just the doctor I think just the general themes the themes to me, like, oh, be anti-automation. Fuck yeah. Hire more people, humans, you know, or as the as the human, uh, the head of humans, what she said, she said organic, you know, she was like, the head of organic, mm-hmm. I mean, humans, us, which was so funny. Uh, oh, but sorry. still, I yeah. I picked it up from my dad. It was kind of weird. <laughs> well, no, not just that, but also she, the corporate mumbo jumbo was like calling people organics because, again, it's like corporate speech. She's like, right, no, I'm yeah. talking to people. We are people. So that right. was fun. We are people. I'm sorry. I'm not a machine. I promise. Mm-hmm. But still, uh, the way I look at it, though, is, yes, at the surface, that's just fine. Like, I, I'm not against that. Why would I be against that? I am a people. I would like a job. Like, what am I, why am I, I against that? People. So I'm not. Thank you. You are a people, Tristan. But still, why – like, the fact that this dude went through an act of terrorism – and yes, he died at the end, but still, he went through an act of terrorism, one. Two, the machines actually killed the person that he enjoyed to prove a point, which – holy shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, and the, then, the machine didn't want to kill her. It was trying to be like, you like this one. You will not hurt this one, right? Right, please? Oh, God, you let her die. Why? Why has it naturally wanted her to die? What the hell is well, wrong with you? How? Show? Couldn't get in. It was, do, it was proving a point. This is what will happen to all of the families. <clears throat> yeah. No, but there was. it didn't let him in to, to stop her and then have a change of heart. That's fair, yeah. And the doctor even said, see, they did it to prove a point. And I'm like, she died. <sighs> like, that's, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I point that the machine was trying to prove to you because you're trying to do it to so many other people. Like, I'm that's sorry, that's but, like, <laughs> that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, <laughs> no, like, like, I just feel like any other doctor including what I think this doctor would normally do, was to be like, yeah. this is all going down right now. Like, what? Yeah. The, sorry, the doctor likes to stop human death and destruction, unless, of course, it's corporations, in which case, well, I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, the doctor even said it. The system isn't bad. And I'm just like, the system just killed that woman. Okay, so it's got some problems that it's got to work out, but it, it'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Like, it was just like – and the thing is, again, this, I like the themes of like – I've, like I've been saying over and over, and so do you. Anti-automation, people should have more jobs. Yeah. Well, I mean, although you I even mean, said to me. Yeah. Like, for me, it was kind of like – you know, he's like, no, humanity needs jobs. Like, we need, you know, what about all the other people who are out of work and have nothing, you know, who, you know, probably have terrible lives because they can't find work on the planet. Uh, I forgot. Uh, it began with a K. Or K uh, oh. <laughs> I see. Uh, I think yeah. it was Kashiak? Maybe. Did no, it wasn't. Just... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you just. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Back the fuck up. I will it's, fight you. What's uh, really funny 
is that he couldn't comprehend. He couldn't comprehend me doing a Star Wars reference that he just blindly agreed. Like, this poor man could not have, wait a minute. Wait hold the, the, fuck. hold the, the fucking, fucking Death Star. <laughs> Put it did in reverse, this man... Up, roll down the window. What did you do? <laughs> um, no, like, you know what you sounded like? You sounded like uh, Team Four Star. Did you just hold a grudge? <laughs> That's what you just sounded like. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Anywho. Yeah. So, okay. My thing with it was, it's like, oh, we need jobs. It's like, you know, you're, you know, the one that you like, she was even talking about how, yeah, it's not the greatest job, but it's a job. And like, I, I understand that too. But at the same time, it's like, how about we make the working conditions better First, before. Well, I think what they were. I think you, you know what it is. Here's what it is, dude. I think two things, and I'm, this is not set up to a punchline. I'm being dead serious here. Two things. One, in their universe, at least for us right now, we don't know what their like what their living wage is or anything like that. So like we have no idea if like if they got a job, if they'd be set. That's the one right. thing. The job sucks, but maybe they're actually yeah. making good money. I have no fucking idea, right? And okay. two, and and this matters as well. The I fact mean, that in I this feel world, like they hear me something about, but like not a lot. Mm, but hear me yeah, out though. In this world, the problems are the machines, quote unquote. In other words, yes, like because here's the thing: the ankle bracelets, by the way, Amazon does have those as well. If you don't know, yeah, like Amazon oh, has yeah. the bracelets. And that, like, and, and they'll monitor if you're not working. Like, if you go to the bathroom, you'll be, like, reprimanded. Like, why are you not at your workstation? So, like, there are some people that either go without bathroom breaks or they pee into bottles and shit just to get by, right. just so that they could, like, keep up their hours. And I, some of you guys are like, wait, come on, are you really? No, but I swear to God, look it up. It's legit. Right? So right, yeah. my thing is, and of course some people could be like, really? Are you comparing this to Amazon? Yes, because this was made without any reference to Amazon whatsoever. Right. This like, was made without any reference to, you know, topics that are current in, in our society. Hell, this was filmed and made before Bezos chose New York and Virginia as the basis yeah. for his new Amazon um factories and and headquarters. So you're sitting back. So I mean, great. I, I I mean factories. Yeah, I'm pretty sure though. To be fair, he did make a reference to looking for a new place last year, which would have been when this was being written and filmed. So to be fair, I do right. think that that was out there, but he didn't choose the places yet. But how funny would it have been if Bezos was like the moon, and it's like who's going to take you there? Fucking Elon Musk walks out behind a fucking curtain. If we combined our powers. <laughs> Top ten anime betrayals. So. Um, but who's going to defend all that shit on the moon? Trump is like, my space force, folks. God damn it, oh. it's all coming together. Oh, God. yeah, no, you're starting to scare me. <laughs> you're painting this picture that I feel could happen. No, Bezos and Trump don't get along. That would never work. But, Fair. granted, if Cuban wanted to get involved, he, he'd probably help out. But still, a Mark Cuban. Um, but it's another billionaire. That's a whole other thing, though. But still, point, though, is Tristan, Tristan, is that uh, when it came to this episode, they didn't talk about labor, and it made it seem like not the humans that built the machines, even though that's how fucking building the machines work. It's them yep. that are like, Hey, guys, don't do that. We're just having polite human conversation. Yeah, that. Don't. Walks away. Right. Hey, guys, perhaps, maybe, do this on your break. Comes right. back again. Oh, Listen God. here, Janet. Holy shit. Stop oh. it. <laughs> no, because I thought for sure they were going to come back a third time and be like, if I, have to, if I have to say something again, I swear to God. <laughs> You don't, you don't have a dad. All right, Jeff. It's time. Get in the box. No, <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, it's like, you don't have a god. Just looks up. That is robophobic. <laughs> All right. The death, 
<laughs> hey, just throw the phone. I can't have fun here, robot friends. No, because oh, it's funny. God. I sat back and I was like, oh my. I, I thought about every single robot friend she, when, you know, the doctor was he, has yeah. ever had. Like K9, the robot right. from McCoy's era. Handles. Was that his name? Yeah, the the Cyberman head that Eleven kept with him when he was No, 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 no. Yeah, no, Handles, yes, but I'm talking about from, like, Sylvester McCoy's era. There was one, yeah. like, robot. I'm pretty oh, sure they were oh, friends. Okay. I have no idea what the fuck it was called because I have not seen that era of Who, or that specific yeah, era of Who. What time is it right now? No, Anthony's asleep. Um, <laughs> I was like, yeah. get him on the <laughs> line right now. I mean, but, I don't uh, think he's seen the actual movie either. He's just seen Big Finish with what they've done with Eight. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm pretty sure not with Eight. I'm talking about with Seven. Oh, oh, right, right. McCoy. Right. I said right, McCoy, right. not McGann. Yes, he did. I. How? Excuse how the dare fuck you? Out of me. How, how dare you? Hey, I let you know what I let that Kashik joke slide. So you know what you can. You can stop it. That was a joke. Oh, God. I knew that that wasn't the real planet, Tristan. Get it on of it. <laughs> um, no, but all jokes aside, though, I just feel like the themes of the episode were odd because it kind of turned into this whole thing where, like, if the guy had not done what he did and he had just asked, hey, guys, I think we need to have more humans working at this company. They would have said, ha ha, go fuck yourself, and you're fired. You have enough time to fuck yourself now, don't you? Because you're fired. So that's Shit. what they would have said to him. No, yeah. but that's what they would have said. But he commits an act of terrorism, and then at the end they're like, and don't worry about it. We're going to be a human company from now on. <laughs> Anyone who's watching, remember, terrorism, it works. Wink. What the fuck? What the fuck? Like, I mean, granted, I'm not, I'm not saying that he was wrong in terms of, yes, his ideals of we should have more people hired here do need to happen, of course. But at the same time, it sounds like, hey, so uh, we agree with the terrorist demands. Thankfully, he's dead, though. Good job on that, by the way, doctor. Killed another person. Didn't even try to do anything wibbly-wobbly to make him be okay. You just said, I mean, hey, you should come okay. over here. Why? No, but they didn't say why. They never told him, yo, I mean, those things are about to explode, dude. I, no. He I, left. He's the one who set off the detonator. He knew. No, no, no. He ran away. He was like, no, he's like, look, man, if you don't, if you don't, like, I'm going to set this whole thing to explode. But the doctor was the one, I thought, who set it off to go at that exact moment. Oh, he was no, he, the one who rerouted the teleporter so they yes. were all staying there and going to That's explode. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. So literally, he's in the crowd well, of them. He saw them unboxing the packages, though. So he could have been like, but, oh. Uh, no, no, no. But he's like, what the fuck? And they're like, come back. Like, they didn't specifically say, yo, get the fuck back here. They're going off here, not where you think they're going. Like, it was just like a, like, it was like a, please, no, don't I die. Mean, I feel like he got I personally I think he would have gotten the contact being like you need to get the fuck out of there look at what they're doing I would be shocked I'd be like wait but but my plan like I don't know well, I'm just saying like I wouldn't as be soon like if you saw them opening the boxes there I think he would have realized well they fucked my plan fight or flight Tristan no one saved the dude well I mean, it's a I'm not saying he deserved to. I'm not saying he deserved to be saved. I'm just saying that, like, it, no, Doctor Who he was a very to die either. But yeah, I don't. No, I just, don't feel like there was much the Doctor could have done. Personally, that's fair. Turn a few off. I don't know. Like this, that's the issue with making the Sonic Screwdriver so amazing at every single corner. It's just like you couldn't save him. No, it was too quick. Like maybe it was slow just for dramatic effect. But it was like, nah, yeah. too quick. Just just exploded out of nowhere. Well, because that okay. was Graham was like, uh, you mind getting us the fuck out of here? And she's like, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, man. It just seemed like, I don't know. 
It just seemed like they could have had enough time to save this dude. Yeah, I, also, I see I, what you're going for. Yeah. But yeah no, I, it was just a weird episode. The time to say. But, but, here's the, but here's the thing that sucks, though. I want to say this is also my favorite, both for the themes and also the investigative work they try to do throughout the episode, the creepy vibe, also the misdirect with the – I think there were too many misdirects this season, but the misdirect with the you know the robots, the kablam robots making you think it's them when really it's this dude. Right. I also never, suspe- never suspected this dude. i got to be real. I mean the way they filmed the, the two guy, – the guy and the gal in charge, I really thought it was them. Yeah. And because, like, Doctor Who doesn't – you know what it is? Doctor Who doesn't do misdirects, in my opinion, that often. Maybe I'm just remembering wrong. I don't think they do them that often. So to me, I think it's always the creepy CEO dudes or the robots or the robots being controlled by the creepy CEO folks. Not CEOs, but, you or know, the, the ones in the managers. the controlled by the creepy CEO that's actually an alien in disguise. Again, yes. <laughs> You're not wrong. And by the way, that creepy alien in disguise – Actually, a Cyberman. Boom. Like, it's just the way the world works. Don't so, worry. But don't worry. The creepy aliens aren't the one behind the terrible things going on. It's just humanity. Yeah, <laughs> right? Um, so, like, it's like, okay. The worst I, enemy was right in front of you the whole time. Oh, yes. Doctor. No, guys, seriously. You need to fix your shit, please. I've been trying to tell you this for years now. <laughs> well, excuse me, Tristan. Well, excuse me, Tristan, but I'm not a racist. Just because they look human doesn't mean that they are human. Well, <laughs> Tristan's just thinking of ways. How can I fire him when he runs this podcast? Because I want him to go fuck himself, and I want him to have a lot of time to go do that. Right here, officer. This podcast right here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. So, um, no, but seriously, though, while they're not the CEOs, you also thought it was middle management being pieces of shit. Yeah. Because, like, I got to admit, I was thrown off. But now I think the problem that they've set up is for the next three episodes – just like the way I tried to see outside the box thinking that it wasn't the robots. I didn't know who it was going to be, but I knew it wasn't them. Now, every time for the next three episodes, I'm going to have to see, like, oh, is it this alien? Nope, it's a fucking bug right over there. I don't know why, but that bug did it. Did you see it for three <laughs> seconds? It's the murderer. Matt, that was a very tiny ant. It can grow brig- bigger for some reason. I don't know. Chemicals? God damn it. Throw away your fucking trash in the right bin. <laughs> it's the fucking it's the fucking bug oh. and that's why but Matt there's like Cybermen and Daleks in this one all being controlled remotely by that bug who potentially has the mind of Davros who is in the body of a human being who summoned him because human beings are terrible alright guys we solved the fucking puzzle go home uh, look gang old man Jenkins was an, was an alien in disguise all along Davros, oh, you've got Davros. me. I would have gotten that was a good one. if it wasn't for you and your meddling human. Like Zoink Scoop, that Dalek is going to kill us, man. Roll, oh, Raggy. Just like, the Dalek is just oh. like, is that dog talking? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, literally, it's like, do they do that? Do they do it? I can't even yell oh, that loud looking at the time. Oh, there is a talking dog within the fortress. Exterminate! Scooby dooby doo. They just get murdered. Oh. I don't. They can't. They yeah. can't. They, no, but like, it, in the process of no, them trying to run cool. and doing. No, because in the process of them trying to run and doing that animation where they're running for like 20 seconds, the Daleks would have shot them like eight times. Thank you for putting that image in my head of my favorite yeah. childhood cartoon of them being vaporized by Daleks. Thank you, Matt. First of all, that. first of all, my favorite too. It's a sad day for me as well. We all have to grow up sometimes. I'm dead inside. Two, two. The Doctor can just go back in time and reverse all of that. If there's Daleks, the Doctor is around. Thirdly, that's another crossover that's coming up. We- it needs to. I mean, Scooby Doo has so many crossovers with like weird things now at this point that I'm like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. The, they had the one with Supernatural. 
I know. I saw a clip from I that, mean, and it was insane. That one is funny how, when I say this out loud. That one makes sense. Scooby-Doo, Warner I mean, Brothers, yeah. Hanna-Barbera. Like, so, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Supernatural airs on CW. That's Warner Brothers. So that yeah, actually yeah. makes sense, quote-unquote. The weird ones are like WWE and like WWE meets Scooby-Doo or like WWE meets Flintstones or the Jetsons. And I'm like, all right, this one's odd. <laughs> like, I'm like, because WWE uh, has like no connection those, with those. One of those makes less sense than the other. <laughs> I don't know which you're thinking of because the Flintstones I mean, is in the past and Jetsons yeah, no, are in the future. They're all cartoons together. The, At least they're all Hanna-Barbera cartoons. But no, no, no. All three of them crossing over with WWE separately is what I'm saying. Oh, oh. What? Yes, like WWE crossing over with Scooby-Doo in its own special. And then WWE crossing over with, I think they had a Jetsons and Flintstones crossover. My God. I I saw the WWE crossover. I did not know about the other two. What is going on? I'm pretty sure the other... I'm pretty sure the other two exist. I'm 95% sure. Anyway, um, yeah, no, so when it came – but anyway, when it came to this episode, you do see why my issue with the theme – like, I I don't know. It's so funny that, like, we have issues with all three of these episodes, but there were such good parts of it that I think in a way they override. And, like, I don't say, like, I hate this series or I hate these episodes. I mean, I do think the earlier ones were potentially better than these, but I don't think these were terrible in any way. I mean, I like all three of them, but I like them for, like, there are specific pieces of each that I really enjoy. Same, yes. Um, And it sucks, though, because I did say, like, Seven does feel like it's my favorite out of these three. But I do think that it's theme, like, they didn't, whoever wrote this, they thought about it, and they thought what they wanted to say. But, of course, intent doesn't always equal impact. So it comes off as terrorism got through to them. And it's like, ooh, I, that's weird. That's a weird one. I guess. I, I thought of it more as like learning from their mistakes, but I guess you could look but, at it that way. But it was too. his mistake. Like if somebody said, hey, I'm trying to murder for vets, you wouldn't be like, we should treat our vets better. You should also think that all the time, but also you should be like, that guy's a murderer. Not like that guy had a really good point. Let's discuss his points. It's like, all right, but like we we do have to acknowledge it's coming from a point of a radical dude who's murdering and like carves like support our troops on his fucking, you know what I'm saying, like on people. Like we should realize like that's fucking terrifying and we shouldn't be like let's have a national discussion based on this dude because then it like leads to this idea of like, well, I mean that's clearly how we get through to people. You know, anarchy and shit. And then just having the doctor be like, we have to work within the system. It's like, doctor, every day you fight. Like, imagine if someone told told the doctor that about the Time Lords. Listen, doctor, you have to work within the system. Granted, yeah, and I before, like the and by the way, turn around and be like, excuse me, did you just tell me to work within the system? And for anyone says, but the doctor's never murdered a Time Lord. The doctor shot a Time Lord who, yes, he knew was going to regenerate, but the doctor shot a Time Lord for Clara. Uh, Six, seven? Good. Hope you enjoy your next one. What? Boom. Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things where, like, again, I'm going to say it over and over. It's not like a broken record. I know. Don't have a problem with the theme that I think they were trying to go for with this one. This one was, by the way, not a Chibnall one. Um, but still, I have oh, no problems with cool. the themes that were trying to be represented. Now, I think this was like the one that did not have Chibnall involved in any way, which I was happy about only because nothing against Chibnall, but I don't think he needs to write every single episode. I think he should yeah. actually he uh, should take a step back and just let well, other people write episodes. One, yeah, the writer for this one was uh, Pete McKay. Cool. And what is? can you see what on Wikipedia what else he's written for? If not Doctor Who, maybe some other stuff. Because my thing is, I, I'm not saying that I dislike Chibnall off the bat. I think he's actually written better Doctor Who episodes as a head writer than he did when he was writing side episodes while other people were 
uh, head writers because he's been working on Doctor Who ever since Davies' era. So, like, he's been doing this for a while for Who. I think he's written better Doctor Who episodes as the head writer, yes, but I do think that writing almost every single episode in a series is going to burn him out more than anything, and if Chibnall wants to do this for three to four years, he should stop doing this every yeah. single episode. You run out of ideas real quick, and even if he thinks, no, I have a bunch of ideas, every person thinks that until certain things bleed over. And like I said, so far we've had a season, even though, yes, you know, he's not, he hasn't written episode six or seven, still we've had a bunch of episodes that it turns into the human is the real monster. Right. And or, you know, the alien isn't the biggest evil bad, even though the first one was, you know, evil bad alien race, to be fair. But still, yeah. most of these, the first five have been written by Chibnall. And there's a reason why those themes are potentially present. Granted, I don't know in that in episode five, he co-wrote that. So I don't know, maybe he was just working with someone who maybe doesn't do much TV unsh- or they were just collabing unsure. Because I know that... Uh, with the Neil Gaiman episode, Neil Gaiman never wrote for TV, so Moffat did help him craft that for television. Right. <laughs> uh, the Neil Gaiman was the one where the doctors, uh, where the TARDIS came to life and was a real, yeah. was a real person. Yeah. So with that one, Gaiman wrote that. But like I said, Moffat came in and, and said, "Hey, I I helped. Like I I crafted this with him." Uh-huh. Um, but still. So, yeah, I hope next season Chibnall writes a lot less simply because, again, I don't – it's not like I hate Chibnall. It's just I think that anyone can get burned out if they're writing five episodes in a row. That's fair. Yeah. Um, That's just my take on it because even though Doctor Who can be anything, still you notice this – because we talked about this before. I know you've noticed with Moffat as well there's just certain themes that – because he kept on writing, you know, he wrote for that many years of Doctor Who, and then also had to do mid-season finales. There's just certain things that always kept on cropping up in his work, like the eyes, you know, being right. seen. Uh, if it's the silence, if it's not the silence, then it is um, the Weeping Angels. If it's not the Weeping Angels, then it was the that one. Uh, I think it was series. It was the mid uh, up to the mid finale for series seven. Uh, I'm not gonna or series six. I'm not gonna say what it was in case there are some people who haven't seen it. But the eyes looking in at Amy. Right. Yeah, so with that you know those visions. <laughs> or the what? Um. Or the eye crust monster. Right, actually. Um, not just the eye crust monster. No, because I thought you were talking about the eyes in that little boy's nightmares, which he had with, uh, oh, with like, Smith. Yeah. Yes. Like, the, like eyes are everywhere with Moffat. So, and it's just something that I'm not saying, like, can't appear in someone's work. But, like, after no. a while, it's just something you see over and over. And Moffat didn't even write, like, Every single – like, I think he wrote more episodes in Series 10 than he did in other series most of the time, if I'm, if no. I'm remembering cor- correctly. Where, like, most other series, he would just write – unless there was a midseason finale, he would write the first one or maybe two and the last, you know, two or one. And that was Moffat's tenure until Series 10 where he randomly wrote that pyramid thing in the middle when I was like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this now? Right. Uh, but in the case of Chibnall, he's writing so many. And again, maybe they wanted him to. Maybe it's not just him saying it. Maybe they were like, no, write more. Because you know you have all these ideas. Awesome. Write more now. But I hope next series it's a bit less Chibnall and we can get some more diversity with the writers. Like we did with um, – Actually, was Rosa Chibnall? I should actually note – we should note that. I would feel bad if it wasn't Chibnall. I've been saying it was Chibnall. Um, but with uh, the Demons in the Punjab episode, that was definitely not Chibnall. And I was happy to hear not only someone else's story but through someone else's voice. Yeah. Because that's something that doesn't happen a lot. You know, it's very interesting. I'll go on a mini rant right now, a very small one, as you look up that uh, Rosa thing. Yeah. Because here's, uh, reason, the here's my little – was for Demons in the Punjab. I'm sorry, what was that? Say that one more time. The Nay Patel. Okay, thank you. So that's who wrote Demons in the Punjab. So the reason why I, I, I'm talking about like a little mini uh, you know, is a diversity rant, it's just in this 
in this situation where I want to talk about, let's say, Marvel, right, where people talk about, ah, all this diversity in Marvel comics, damn it all to hell. But here's the funny thing. The people who are calling for diversity are also upset, and some people who don't like diversity are like, wait, why are they upset? They're getting their African-American characters taking over Iron Man and you know, women taking over Thor and things like that. Why are they upset about this shit? And the reason why is funny to you know potentially to think about because it's the fact that even though Marvel is sitting there like oh here's your diversity they're still having the same people in certain cases writing these characters so it might right. be so in other words it might be an African American character but it's still through a white person's voice now is that always a problem no I'm not going to say that you should never have a situation where you know if you're a white person or someone who isn't of that ethnicity you can't write for that character, that would be terrible. That would mean that Chibnall can't write for Yaz. Quickly, Chibnall, don't type for Yaz. Like, that's stupid. It's really fucking right. stupid, you know? But at the same time, if you're going to talk about diversity and say, like, hey, you know, we're bringing in diversity, even some people for Doctor Who, some of you guys out there that are like, I still don't like the Doctor's a woman. I don't want this diversity. This is terrible. What's funny is that you have people who like the diversity are actually sitting back and going, why don't we have more women directors or why don't we have a woman head writer with a female doctor? Now, I'm not, thankfully, so far we haven't seen any uh, women's stereotypes with this doctor. Thank fucking God. Oh. But still, it, it was some of some people's, including at least my concern, like nothing against Chibnall, just like, are we going to potentially see a bad, shitty stereotype at one point accidentally creep its way in? Because no one doing it with malice, but it would creep its way in. <laughs> Thankfully, seven episodes in, more than halfway through the series, and we have not seen that. Right. But with Demons in the Punjab, it was still nice to hear not just, again, not just Yaz's you know, quote-unquote story or her grandma's story, but through another person's lens of what they had heard and what they had learned about their history rather than someone else potentially like Chibnall coming in and going, this is what I believe I know. I did research on this. I recently went to India to, to learn about this, you know, which I'm not saying artists and, and creators can't do research like that. Of course they can. That would be like me saying, well, if you're Japanese and you're writing a manga, don't include India or don't include New York. You're not from here. Don't do it. Like, no, that's fucking stupid, right, in my opinion. Right. But at the same time, it's also good to get that diversity not just in the way someone looks but who's actually working behind the scenes giving that story and telling that story. So that's the way I look at it, and it's just funny because you have some people, again, like I said earlier, oh, diversity in Marvel, diversity in Marvel is terrible. You, all the lefties must love this. And it's like, no, you actually have the lefties being like, that's not actually the struggles of a black woman. Like, you know, like, because uh, I forgot her name, but it was a new character that was introduced that took over, that was set or seemingly set to take over the role of Iron Man. Wow. And she, I don't remember her backstory and what she went through, but she was just a 15-year-old whiz kid. She was African-American. She had an afro. And she was just as smart as Tony Stark, if not more. And wow. people people reading this, or who are supposed to be reading this, you know, African-American people are supposed to be like, oh, well, you're drawn in by this, right? Her character? It's like... They were kind of like, look, we're ha not everyone, of course, but certain people were saying, look, we're happy that she's as smart as Tony Stark, if not more. That's totally cool. But she just seems like Tony Stark reskinned. Right. Literally, like it's just a different version of Tony Stark instead of her being an African American with her struggles. Right. So that's the issue. Is that you know, it's like when you have different people. Uh, doing this, just not even just for the sake of it, but just doing it, even if they're trying to do a good job and help out. Then it's just, but it's like, but it's not your story, right? So in this case, it was beautiful for that episode to get someone else who's potentially lived through this or whose family had lived through that to tell that story. Yeah. That was wonderful. Now, yeah. for Rosa, who wrote Rosa? Because uh, I was asking for you to look that up while I was giving my mini rant. Oh, I see. Um, Damn it, Tristan, you were so entranced by my beautiful voice. Okay. Uh, Mallory Blackman and Chris Chibnall both wrote it. All right. So, yeah, so exactly. So Chibnall was there. <laughs> Chibnall was there. Chibnall was like, I'm here. Chibnall, you're writing the script? Yes, from the corner. Um, no, but <laughs> seriously, though, all jokes aside, um, yeah, I don't know if Chibnall had to work with her to craft it for television or if they just – I don't know. I, I don't know what work he did on the script. 
because I don't think we're privy to that information right now. I'm sure it'll come out in an interview in the near future if it hasn't right. already. But um, well, but we'll still though. Written for Doctor Who in the past as well. Oh, what has she written? Uh, All right, as you're looking that up, I'm going to say also that. 2005, so probably nine. Oh shit! Yeah, definitely nine. Well, fuck. Um, all right, so that's pretty cool. So I'm happy she's written for Doctor Who before. Either way, uh, I, I'm still sitting here as Kira is about to die on screen. I don't know why she had to die. Seriously, why did that have to suck all of the air out of the room? <laughs> and then we just had to move on with the episode. Like, I know people die, but shit. Um, yeah. What was I? I mean, it was kind of a morbid, like, laugh um, when I was watching it with Anthony. Because, no, that scene was terrible. I was like, oh. Oh, no. But then, because Anthony had said to me before we watched the episode, he's like, so this is an episode that's going to make you afraid of another household item. And I'm like, great, great. What, what's going to be this time? And for the whole time, I'm like, like looking at the robots, I'm like, is it going to be something to do with them? And then by the end of, after that scene, like a commercial looked over, I'm like, so I hate the fact that this is going to take all the tension out of what we just watched. But, oh, my God, I have to be afraid of bubble wrap now? Are you fucking kidding me? And we both just died. So I'm going to, I'm going to be a big, huge Doctor Who nerd. I'm going to be one of those sniveling nerds on the Internet. That's going to be me right now. Okay? Okay. Why did the robot, or how could the robot get through the TARDIS's shields? How big is a corporation that it could get through the TARDIS's shields? Jeff Bezos, what have you done? Wait, when did... In the beginning of the episode to deliver the package. Oh! The TARDIS has shields. Yes? Yes. That means... Not everyone can just. Well, just I feel like because it was teleporting I'm, directly inside the TARDIS. That's bad. Nothing should be able to do that. That's a fair point. No, like he's, I'm realizing, crap. That's a fair point. The only so, thing like, that I'm I could say, if I want to, no. I well, here's a good fan canon. Like, from the outside in. What no, no, no. A good a good no no no. A good fan canon is just the TARDIS being like, that's not a threat. Fair. Like the TARDIS <laughs> wouldn't be like <laughs> Yeah. The TARDIS isn't like a dog that's just like, Oh my god, look at you. Okay, dog, that's that's a Dalek. Don't let that in. Don't let that in. Stop licking its legs. It's a it's a Dalek. Oh my god. So yeah, like it's not that. You know, it's clearly not going to let in enemy, you know, uh, enemy uh, or anything that would cause like a time manipulation issue. Like, you know, when with time crash, which was so much fun, uh, but nothing like that. So, of course, you know, that's not going to happen. They, this, you know, and, and again, sometimes I have to admit, yes, Tenant sometimes did forget to put up the shields. So maybe the shields weren't up. It can't right. happen. I mean, that's what happened. Tenet forgot to put up the shields, and that's how he crashed into both... Into the goddamn Titanic. Yeah, before the <laughs> Titanic, when he crashed into right. Pete Dav- uh, into Davidson's... Uh, is it Pete Davidson? Uh, I'm not is that what that I'm doctor's sure. name was? The fifth doctor? I believe so, yeah. I always get confused oh, right. because... When Pete... I ran yes, into time crash. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah, no, that was... And you know who wrote that one, don't you? Moffat. <laughs> no, Moffat. Oh, okay. Moffat. Was it? Was Moffat. it about doctors? Was it about doctors meeting in a time loop? Ding, ding, ding. Well, I think I'm pretty sure that's Peter Moffat. Right. Yeah, it was Moffat. Um, and it was a really good one too. It was like it was one of the first Doctor Who things I'd ever seen, like a, a kind of crossover because. 
uh, at the time, I think I told you, I saw 11, but this was before the 50th. So I was going back to watch uh, older Doctor Who with an ex-girlfriend of mine. And we were watching it, and then I found that on YouTube because, of course, there was no legal way to get that since that was – actually, no, I'm pretty sure it's on a DVD to be fair. But still, um, I don't think it was in a DVD that we got. But either way, I showed that to her, and I was just super into it because just the timey-wimey weirdness of it all. Like he actually gets to meet an older <laughs> slash younger version of the Doctor. Right. Love himself, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so Moffat wrote that. So yeah, so the Doctor forgot to put up the shield, and that's why he crashed into the TARDIS. And then, canonically, if you want to consider the time crash canon, that's when he crashed into the Titanic. But the episode just has it lead right into the Titanic with none of that, you know, fun in the middle. Um, so yeah, so yes, that's happened before. Perhaps that was the case here. Funnily enough, it was an older uh, package, you can see when yeah. the doctor ordered it. Yeah, because the oh god, that scene was hilarious for me. Because I was, I looked over at Anthony. I'm just like, did the doctor just order something off of Amazon? And he's like, wait for it. And I looked back, and she pulls out the damn pen. No, but she said it was a uh, package that was like delayed. So literally, she yeah. ordered it when she was 11. Yep. And it just came. Just got here. I mean, it probably had quite a hell of a time tracking down the TARDIS. Which is another funny thing. Like, we got its exact coordinate. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Wait a minute. Locking up. Locking up. Lock. I'll wait. <laughs> for all we know, for, for all we know, they were trying to deliver that package when that <laughs> prototype that they got in the episode was the actual fucking functioning oh, unit. Yeah, right. No, because the doctor could have, doctor could have ordered that hundreds of years ago. True. But oh my god, that was so funny. Um, also, I love how not only did that was bubble wrap ruined for you, but Kablam was ruined for the doctor. Yeah. I mean, the doctor was sitting there like, I love Kablam. You know, if you want it, Kablam. And then like, you know, you know, like literally like forty minutes later, she's right. just like, wow. Kablam, I hate socks. That. So, that was funny. Um, right. But, yeah, so, it sucks, though. Because, yeah, I feel like Seven had the most issues, but still, it was, in, in a way, the most entertaining. Yeah, I mean, for, well, me. for me, I like them each for different reasons, because, like, Demons of the Punjab really had the emotional component to it that really hit me. I was like, wow, that was that was powerful. Like, a yeah. lot of the episodes have been so far. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I'm, I've always been interested in Doctor Who's social commentary, so, like, seeing... Well, yeah, for me, the, the, the thing, it's, it's not new. been like, wow, we're, we're going for the jugular on this one. We're not, yeah. we're not dancing around anything. We're just going for it. And it's nice. Yeah, I'll admit, I'll admit, yes. It well, because you know what you know what I like too about the social commentary in this one. I don't. Here's the thing. I actually don't think it's going for the jugular because I think they could actually be more in our faces, and I'm happy that they're oh, not. True. Yeah. Like, because the thing is, like, I, in my opinion, I'm okay with like no mentioning of Trump. Talk about political stuff, but you don't have to mention actual legitimate politicians. Although they have mentioned like Tony Blair in the past, like they have mentioned real politicians in the past, but like they don't have to, you know. Like they can just go and do their own thing, but still get involved with political issues because they have been doing it for years. Like anyone who's saying like I can't believe Doctor Who has gotten this PC or whatever, it's been right. PC since it since its inception. inception. You know, yeah. Which, Where the hell which, is, which is <laughs> well, the thing is, they haven't been around all this time, which is fine if they haven't, well, even, but they have to understand that this is how it's been. Right. I mean, even if you go back to older seasons of New Who, too, it's still there. No, 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 but you're asking me where have they been, and I'm saying they haven't been fans, and it's okay if they haven't been fans. They oh, haven't been okay. here, I, I but I'm mean, saying yeah. that, yeah. Because you're saying the people. I'm saying the people haven't been here, and that's fine. But if they're going to say, like, oh, this PC thing in Doctor Who, it's been. 
You know, right. like like well, even I also feel even like they must what? have been here for a few at least a previous. Season, no, then not at all. If they, well, if they're like if they're like, oh, why did it get so political? It's like, well, obviously. Like, what would but they be comparing the, it to then? Like, how would you know? Nothing. Then? No, they just wouldn't. That's what I'm saying. There are some people who are legitimately, not everybody, of course, but there are some people who are legitimately talking out of their ass. Everyone? No. But there are some people who are. Because all they know is, oh, this Doctor Who show has been like men, like, all the time. Now it's a lady. Why is it getting so PC? Yeah. It's like, bruh. It's been PC since the fucking 70s. Even with some of the first doctors saying some weird stuff now and again, still, it wasn't as weird as when we saw him, you know, in that, in that recent special. Like, that was more of a parody of the first doctor than an actual homage. Because the first right. doctor, he actually was not like that. Yes, he had some issues, I will admit. Yes, he did. But most of them was to his granddaughter, who was, if we're going by human years, like 12. Right. You know, um, and to be fair, he treated like he didn't treat like, yes, he wasn't the nicest to Barbara, but he also treated Ian like shit, too. <laughs> uh, he yeah. he called him incompetent a lot. It right. wasn't like he was like, yeah. yeah, look at this awesome man over here. And other than you, Barbara, like, no, he was just like, look at these two fools, both to Ian and, and Barbara. Both. This shit, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and he was just like, I don't think I need to listen to this. You don't, so leave. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, he would just say shit <laughs> like that. Oh, man. But still, either way, what I'm trying to get at here is I, um, you know, I, well, you, we were both getting at, is like, yes, you could say it's been a little bit more PC in terms of not just with the doctor, but like some of the themes, because it does seem like, yes, every episode, you know, you could say that. Fair. But again, I don't think there was an episode – here's the other thing, too. I don't think there was an episode in the past that was anti-PC either. Right, yeah. That's the thing. Like, even if it's not being pro-PC in certain ways or what's considered PC now, it's still – because here's the thing, too, right? At a time when we're having all these wars, at the time you could argue maybe being anti-war isn't necessarily PC, but it still is – Something that, as of now, coming off as like you know all these hippies and stuff like that, yeah, like it's you know being anti-war is I don't know like it's just it's a hard it's also hard to look at history through our lens now because stuff that now is being called PC at right. the time yeah. would be radically different, right? You know, like oh, it's politically correct to you know have an episode about Rosa Parks, yeah, but you know when they did shit like that in the sixties. That fucking was not politically correct. Right, yeah. You know, like having, having even though, um, you know, saying things are progressive for like Star Trek, again, it also brings up the point, where have you been? But it definitely wasn't right. PC to have, um, to have, um, oh fuck, to have Kirk and Uhura kiss on screen. There were right. some networks yeah. that wouldn't even air that in the U.S. That wasn't yeah, PC at the time. Too. It's not like Doctor yeah. Who is the only one who's had social commentary in their sci-fi. It's like, come on, of course. come on, people. Of course. Yeah, no. <laughs> what are you I, but, watching? But, it, but the thing is, that's the thing, yeah, you're because you're talking about this from, from the perspective of if people have actually been watching, which, yes, if they have been, then, of course, I'm also confused as well. Because while right. there are some episodes where the Doctor does, you know, kill things, of course, well, there are many right. when he's just like, we can't even... We can't even touch it. We have to go for the yeah. pacifist solution. Right. Well, that's what I feel like, at least for me, that's what's been most of it. It's like older, like not older as in a sense of age, but fans who have seen other bits of Who. Maybe not even classic. Maybe just people who have been around for new Who. Who are just like, oh, I don't mm. like the direction it's going in. You know, there's too much, you know, social commentary. It's like, um, you know, as we're wrapping this up. I don't think you have it. Um, I think I'll say this much, right? As we're wrapping this up, I think it's not that, Tristan, because I don't want to go that far. Actually, okay, let me explain. I will go that far if these are people saying this in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. But I got to be real with you, Tristan. I think it's just people that were watching Doctor Who before they had their social commentary goggles on. <clears throat> Which, no, dude, I'm being serious. Are you telling me that at five years old you were like, I love that Star Wars is attacking yeah. Nazis? 
Okay. Like when you were fucking – that's what I'm saying. Like when you were five, when you were eight, when you were 12, when you were 15, you were like, I think these might be Nazi allegories. <laughs> you know, but even then, but even then you were still like, but like now as you're 20, you know, as you're in your 20s, you're just like, oh, yeah, them the Nazis. They're like, those are Nazis. You're like, you're just like able to really just be like them Nazis. But if you didn't, for some reason, if you never had to turn those on for Star Wars, like four, five and six, and now you see seven and eight, you're like. I think these First Order guys are Nazis. That's very uh, very political. I don't remember Star Wars being this political. And because, again, when you were five, you were just fucking going pew-pew. Either way, guys, so we had some technical difficulties. This is totally the same day, right, Tristan Walter? It feels like it. But when you have a time machine, what's the difference? And who cares? Womp, womp, womp. All right, so time womp. Uh, either way, guys. Actually, it's so much a terrible thing because we're going into our own time stream. But that's a big no-no. This, this is a terrible idea. Anyway. But don't worry. It'll all be okay as long as we don't see two bat beings chilling out being like, we're just here to witness, bruh. As long as that doesn't happen, we're good. Anyway. Right. I want to thank... Definitely not seeing that. Uh, anyway, I want to thank all of you for listening to another episode of Doctor Who Wednesday. I hope that all of you have an amazing Thanksgiving. You might be listening to this on or during Thanksgiving, because, of course, it started at 1130 on Wednesday. So I hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving. Hang out with everyone you, you love and care about, even if it's just you. <laughs> even if you're like, but Matt, it's going to be me this Thanksgiving. Woo, you're already even, there. Even if your only love is turkey. Or tofu, whichever you prefer. Or ham. That too. God, sweet Thanksgiving ham. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Now I'm now I'm off. The, I'm like, nope. This is we're editing the podcast right now. Anyway, but seriously, Kablam love it. you all. Kablam it! Kablam that ham. Just don't <laughs> just don't pop the bubble ham wrap. Uh, anyway, so this has been a this has been fun. This has been a blast. That was a terrible joke after that bubble wrap. This this has been a blast, everyone. Um, oh, I would say if you if you want to listen to some other podcasts that we've done, either fairly recently or even going way, way back, you can actually go over to iTunes and search up Those Guys, or you can go over to our YouTube channel, Those Guys on the Radio, and find our podcasts on there. Maybe you're listening to this through our Blog Talk Radio account, which is blogtalkradio.com slash Those Guys on the Radio, because we have all of our podcasts on there as well we do a bunch of different types of uh, uh, type of podcasts types of podcasts i mean that also technically works as well should have just went on that route instead of trying to fucking immediately turn off that icy road uh that can put your hands into the tardis's psychic psychic link and find all our old stuff like basically Basically, that's what you can do. Also, you can find our other uh, our other gaming stuff over at Those Guys Play. Also, you can search that up on YouTube, and you can find us there. And you can find all of our different social media accounts, like our Those Guys uh, Facebook page, which is just facebook.com slash Those Guys on the Radio. Our Twitter, you can tweet us at, at Those Guys Radio. And you can go over to our website, which is teacherproduction.net, to follow all of our different stuff, because we have a bunch of different stuff that we post on a near daily basis throughout our three different YouTube channels. Because we also have TG Productions, where some of our more or either esoteric stuff or our news uh, stuff, specifically tokusatsu news is posted there and some other anime reviews. And by the way, I think we mentioned this earlier on in this podcast, but if we didn't, yes, we did actually, Keikaku Corner, which is on our Those Guys on the Radio YouTube channel, where we talk about different either comic book, anime, manga, gaming news, both you and I, Tristan. So yes, you can also check that out as well over at Those Guys on the Radio. And if you want to make any suggestions, Questions, questions, suggestions like, hey, do an episode of this on your gaming channel or a review on this, or just suggestions, different like questions, uh, stuff that we can answer either on Kekaku Corner or other you know platforms and shows that we have. Go over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Productions. You can help keep the lights on and also get some stuff in return. All right, guys. So, again, thank you all so much. Love you all. Take care and tune in next time for another episode of Doctor Who Wednesday. Nope, that's Scott. Right? <laughs> well, it's been taken down. The entire video's been taken down. Anyway, good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.